I'm Natalie Daniels. I'm here with Anthony Het, a professional member of the network who's screened with us at Manchester Liftoff with his film Waiting. Anthony, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got up to this moment in your career. Yeah, so I'm Anthony Het. Um, I'm originally from a small town in North Wales. I've been in London for nearly a decade. It'll actually be 10 years this summer, uh, August time. And I uh, graduated in 2011 with a, an MA in script writing um, from City University. And I kind of used that as an opportunity to, to move down to London um, and try and put myself in the place where there's kind of the, the most opportunity, I guess. Um, and I think in the last few years, there's been, there's been a lot more opportunities in different regions of the country, but especially 10 years ago, it felt like everything was happening in London. Maybe people still find that the case. I, um, so, I yeah. think there's a lot more um, opportunities now coming in the north as well. So Manchester, because of BBC moving up there, it's just mm -hmm. opened a lot of doors. But I, I do agree, London is still the hub for filmmakers. Yeah, so it made sense to come here and to study here. Um, I found the course that I, I wanted to do and I wanted to do the script writing. I really, really love the writing side of it. Um, and I wanted to learn directing, but I wanted to do that through actually directing and making films. So I, after graduating, I've made three short films um, and Waiting is the, the second and they're a trilogy of films. Um, some of the characters do inter intertwine in the stories, but it's not a trilogy in terms of characters, but in terms of the, the themes of the films. So it's really interesting that you've done a sort of trilogy. Is your aim then to um, get them distributed or sold on as a block or are you kind of taking them off one by one? Yeah, I think so. So I think that originally I just made the first short film um and it was oh what can i do with this and i tried to send it to a few festivals i didn't have a lot of i didn't have a budget really to do that um so it got picked up by one or two festivals and then i had a few years in between the the, the first one and the second one the second one and the third one i made quite close together um so in a sense the the three separate processes make make the film uh, send it to festivals, kind of do that. But yeah, ultimately, I think that once all three have, have been released and have done, hopefully have, have all been selected for festivals, or at least I've entered them, um, I would kind of put them together. And, and someone suggested that maybe I could chop them up and actually put them together, kind of like mix the order of the three films, because they're kind of, they're all in the same world. They're essentially based on the same street, some of the same characters. Um, so he could kind of, put it together as one longer film but I think that would kind of work in certain ways but I think that it'd be quite nice just to keep them separate but yeah put them package them together in in some way so that but you watch one film after the other um, it's really interesting that you kind of want to do that because we see more and more on Netflix now I don't know if you've seen I always get this wrong um is it love sex and aliens or robots no, no it's robots um okay and basically, it's um, a series of short films that are all in the same genre. Okay. So, and that's now available on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So short films are becoming more accessible to the wider mm -hmm. audience. So yeah. I think that you're one step ahead of the game if you're going down that route. Yeah, I don't really know. I'll be honest. I don't know a lot about distribution and that, that kind of thing. But I think that it's something that I will definitely kind of look into with the films. But ultimately... The goal as well. It's always nice to for people to see your films, for people to to say whether they enjoy, hopefully they enjoyed it um, and that kind of thing. Um, but ultimately, with these films, it was about learning as I made, and I made three shorts now, and then I want to kind of move on to kind of what I feel is the next step in my career. And so, kind of the next idea is a little bit more ambitious. It's a bit a little bit longer. Um, and I think that I've learned a lot from the process of making those shorts that would really help me. And also just things in terms of some funding and, and things like that or building connections, just having those films that you can show people. It, it obviously, it, you know, as a, like a portfolio, it, it, it helps kind of push you forwards. Absolutely. So um, you mentioned then about the three films and you went to you did an MA in screenwriting what did you do prior to that was your BA 
course anything to do with filmmaking yeah so um i'll try and keep it brief but so i when i was in school i was really good at maths and physics and <laughs> my my dad is an engineer so i felt it, it was encouraging and it was helpful in a certain way that my family and my school um encouraged me that way towards engineering and that kind of thing and and that's what i thought i wanted to do especially kind of around um motorsport and and cars and that kind of thing um but what happened was that i went to university to study uh motorsport engineering um automotive engineering and it was very well dry i guess it wasn't as creative as i wanted it to be and and a lot of it was around kind of data and uh, and mathematics and so I came away from that and then I went back to to uni almost by mistake my sister wanted to do um IT um she worked in IT but she wanted to further herself a further career so she went back to study and she went to a university that's not too far from like our parents home so I'd, I'd been to university come back home didn't know what I was doing um and I went to the interview with my sister. So my sister was like, basically like, oh, come and hold my hand, kind of like come to the interview with me. Um, and I was like, yeah, okay, cool. So we went to the university and I was just sat in the foyer and she went off to do her interview. And this guy, um, John, sat down next to me and was like, so what What would you like to, to do? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I've just done this and then I want to do that. And he was like, but what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to write and I want to make films. And he was like, well, we've got this course. How about, you know, you think about doing this course? And then I think it was about two weeks later, I was sat in the classroom. Um, <laughs> it was a bit crazy. And I was studying, um, I did uh, media communications and writing. So it was kind of half kind of like broadcasty type stuff. We did, we kind of like did like a radio documentary and we did a few things like practical stuff. And then we did uh, the kind of writing stuff, which was writing for the media. We also did some like writing for children. We did kind of different mixtures of things. So that was my... Um, yeah, my bachelor's degree. Great. And then from there you did your MA and then just took all those skills and started making your own films. Yeah. Um, and also, I'm, I'm sure we'll kind of touch on kind of networking and, and meeting people and stuff. And I took those skills and didn't have many skills and went into kind of making these films, not really knowing what I was doing. But you surround yourself with good people um, and you, you learn from them and hopefully they do learn something from you and, and, and it's good to kind of uh melting pot hopefully of ideas and and skills well you just touched upon networking we might as well talk about it um so you obviously came to the manchester lift of film festival and got to meet all the filmmakers who were screening in your slot as well and i think it's, it's something that is probably the most important thing about being a filmmaker and immersing yourself in the industry is meeting other filmmakers so um being able to go to festivals and watching those screenings um seeing those filmmakers there and then asking them the questions that you want and essentially aspiring to work with them you're not going to meet them in a better environment that than at film festivals so i just wanted to say thank you for coming <laughs> and um what what has your experience been networking yeah no so it was great well I, we've kind of chatted about this previously um i don't like networking in the sense of like physically doing it so um i didn't realize but someone pointed out a few years ago i don't really start conversations so if you start a conversation with me i don't stop talking and i'll just kind of blah 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 and then kind of go oh did i say too much um and my girlfriend tells me off that sometimes she's like you don't have to say everything you can <laughs> kind of keep things back so but i don't i'm not very good at starting conversations so going to an event which is a networking event where you're meant to network is quite daunting um, and there are kind of ways to get around that and and kind of get the best out of it. But when it's something like a film festival and it has a networking element, then that opens that up. It makes it less daunting. It makes it a little bit easier um, that you can go there with the idea of you're going to watch some films. Some people are going to watch your film. And then the, a conversation can come from that because you've just seen their film. So you can you can go up to them and you say you like your, their film, you, you like a certain element of their film. Um, or you can ask them a question about the film um, and it, it opens up opportunities and also those people are there to do the same so when I went in Manchester it was great there was uh, I can't remember six seven eight other filmmakers and everyone was chatting and I had to dash off at the end um, 
I was staying with a, a friend and I had to try and get the, the last tram. And so I kind of said hi and bye to everybody and rushed off. But everybody gave me their business card. And um, that's one thing. Definitely everybody advised get a business card. Yeah. I didn't have a business card, but I collected everybody else's. And then that was kind of on the Thursday. So on the Monday morning, my job for Monday morning was I sent an email to to all the filmmakers because I think it's great to meet people and to talk on the evening. But it's like, can you kind of build some sort of friendship or relationship from that? Because you never know what's going to happen. And I think, you know, I've said this before and I, I'll say it again and again I'm sure just build friendships and relationships with people who you have some sort of connection with that you think you could be friends with that you like their work even if you don't necessarily you're not making the same kind of work if there's something in that work that you like and you can you can you can watch it and if you, you don't make something like that just make those connections because you don't know one day that you might need someone's help or you don't know who these people are going to be now they're you know working filmmakers they're aspiring filmmakers they're just made their first short it, it may be but then a couple of years you, down the line you don't know where they're going to be no everybody has to start somewhere so i think networking is really helpful and really wonderful can be a little bit daunting um but i think it's it's a wonderful way to do stuff because also um the vast majority of the people that i find for the crew are recommendations from other people yeah. So if you watch a film and you meet the director and you think the cinematography was really great or there is an element, the editing or something like that, and you're looking for that person, then it's really easy to send them an email and go, hi, Claire, um, I really enjoyed the sound on your film, thought it was really great. Uh, would you mind putting me in touch with your sound designer? And they're going to say yes. And they're going to you know, send a little email saying, hi, Anthony, hi, Deborah, this is blah, 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 put you in touch. And that's how, how things kind of happen. So it's it's really helpful. Absolutely. We get requests like that all the time. If the um, filmmaker who attended the festival, an audience member saw their film and they didn't get a chance to get their email, we get requests all the time for people to share the email addresses of other filmmakers. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that you're doing that yourself. <laughs> um, so just to get a little bit more information about you as a filmmaker, are there any inspirational films or filmmakers that, have really led you on the path that you are taking? Yeah, so I think that initially when I was a lot younger, when, so when I was a teenager, it was a lot of like gangster movies, Scorsese, Tarantino, it was, it was all that kind of stuff. And then, um, and great, great films, but I couldn't imagine myself making that kind of film. Um, and then as I kind of got a little bit older, um and my taste started to change a little bit and i got into more kind of f uh, filmmakers very kind of stereotypically stereotypically kind of very british filmmakers people like mike lee mm -hmm. um and and my big hero is shane meadows so um for me this is england is just like like that's the bar that i'm trying to reach i think it's just the most wonderful film and the most wonderful television that's been made in the last kind of 10, 15 years. And what, what particular is it that makes that your, your favorite film or your favorite director? What is sure, it that he does? I, I don't know how he does it. I wish I knew how he did it. Um, but I think it's just wonderful the way I know a little bit about his process because he talks about his process. The actors that he works with talks about the process. I think it's wonderful that a lot of the actors are were not well known before they made the film or you know in uh, Thomas Togos who's the the main character he'd never acted before and he, he shows this amazing performance and then he picks other actors that you you might have seen in a soap or a small part in something or you know and he brings this cast together and he, he works with them and then he every you know there is a script but everything he rehearses everything and I've never worked like that, but I'd like to try that. And I think that it's giving respect and um, space to the actors to come up with the material as well as, and then I'm sure that, you know, there's a scripted element as well. Um, and I think that Mike Lee does the, the, the same kind of thing. And I think that's really quite exciting. But I think the reason that I like it is 
I just love all the different elements, but that because of the way that it works, I think the dialogue seems realistic. It seems real. The people seem real. You buy into the characters. I think they're wonderful, rounded characters. There's no 2D characters. The men, the women, old, young, they all seem rounded. They all seem real. They, the world. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think it's just he's created a wonderful world full of, of wonderful characters. And then it's really beautifully shot. The cinematography is beautiful on it. Um, and I really like the way that he is able to use it, it. It's drama, and some of it is really dark, but there's some really light, funny moments, and he intertwines the comedy with the drama really, really well. Which makes it more real, more real life than... Um... Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if it's just exactly down and dark, yeah. If it's down and dark all the time, it is it, a bit too much. And then, it, yeah, he makes it a bit more real. Those nice light moments. Cool. Great. So, is that then your goal to make something along those lines? Yeah, I think that. So, the next step for me is that I'm still kind of working on the script, but I've written um, a script about two 10 year old boys and a lost dog um i'm trying to kind of sell it as it's beethoven on a south london estate um so it's kind of um not quite as family friendly as beethoven but it's got that kind of hopefully it's got that kind of feel and it's a film about young people but maybe for a slightly older audience um and i think that's i really enjoy um working with with young people writing young characters and i love the the coming of age kind of that's my genre i love drama i love all, all different aspects of it but i think coming of age is what really excites me so i'm going to work on that next and the idea is to make that really awkward 20 to 30 minute short film which doesn't get into festivals so <laughs> yeah um, because <laughs> it's really difficult to program um and i think that the reason I'm doing that is to challenge myself. So I'm working with younger actors, which I've not done before. I'm working with a dog and a dog trainer, which I've not done before. And I'm working at a longer length. And And the reason is that I have a feature idea about her, a mum and her autistic son. And that's where I kind of want to get to. I want to make that feature, but I want to be ready to make that feature. So you want to and, hone your skills in this in this extended short. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the idea. And also kind of bring a bit more attention to my filmmaking because at the moment to a certain degree there's so many filmmakers there's so many films you know it's quite hard to kind of go hey I'm here hello um and film festivals and, and networking and and all these other things kind of help and running your own events and and there's so many ways to kind of get yourself out there and 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 kind of into the public eye a little bit but I feel that rightly or wrongly I believe that this next film that I want to make this slightly longer one I feel that people would really like it. And I think that it, if I can make it to the level that I want to, if I can get the, the budget, the equipment, the crew, the cast that I want to and make it the best that I can, I believe that I can make, I, I genuinely believe in this idea. It could be really good. People will really like it. It will get some sort of attention, which will then hopefully go, okay, look at this guy. He's made this film. He's ready to make a feature. And then I'll get a little bit more support. That's That's the dream. And that's what this is the idea that I believe in. And then the idea is then I make, hopefully I get the support to, to make the feature. So going back to finding your audience, who is your mm -hmm. audience for this film? Um, that's a very good question. Me, I guess. Um, I think one of the first, the mo ma main important rules in filmmaking for me is make the film that you want to see. Um, I heard a comedian on TV years ago. I think it might have been either Vic or Bob, um, Bob Mortimer or Vic Reeves. I think one of those guys said when they were talking about comedy, because their comedy is like really bizarre and off the wall. Yeah. Just do something that makes you laugh and there'll be other people that will laugh with you. Like you're not the only person that finds that funny. So the first thing is that I'm making this film because this is the film that I would like to see. I know that this is, I would really like to watch this film. If somebody else made this, I would go and watch this film. So that's the, the kind of the first kind of motivation. Um, and then secondly, um, there's an element of the, there's diversity within the cast. So 
within my films, the fact is that I'm making films in in London. If I was making a film back in North Wales, which I would love to do at some point, the cast is going to be 99.9% white British um, people. Yeah. And if anybody's not British, they might be Eastern European because that's the makeup of the area. Um, whereas in London, it's, you know, this metropolis of people from all over the world, which I believe, and hopefully lots of other people believe, makes this city great. And so in my films I've made so far, there's been white characters, but there's been black, mixed raced, Asian, and I've made had characters that have been teenagers and then characters that have been in their kind of 70s. Um, and I've wanted that variety within it because it makes it real. I make my films in Walthamstow, um, in North well, in, in sorry, North London, where I live, and that's the genetic makeup of that area. Yes, yeah, a very so diverse area. Very diverse area, and that's why I enjoy part of the reason I enjoy living there. Um, and when I was making that film, it, it makes sense to have characters from different places. Um, and you know, the the same with this film. This film is predominantly black characters um, of Portuguese. Uh, ethnicity of background because the place where I want to set it I worked in a school a number of years ago and these characters are based on children loosely based on children that were in the school so it makes sense to have those characters you know as similar to the people that I met in real life um, so it kind of makes sense to kind of do that so that's kind of hopefully another audience because you know there is this and with the feature film it's I'm not doing this on purpose it, it seems like I'm doing this on purpose but you know part of me I do want to encourage diversity in front of and behind the camera that is something that I'm striving to do but also my feature idea is based around a female lead character and whether you're talking about ethnicity or whether you're talking about gender or age there is this massive dis discrepancy um, about who we see in our films um, you know, the, mm. the the character, you know, a lot of the time, the male, it's a white male lead character. And, you know, you've got this kind of Hollywood that's, that's, that's been pushing that agenda for a long time. And now things are actually starting to change, which is obviously. And we've uh, seen it as too. well. Yeah, we've sure. seen it as and well for the festival circuit. So in the past two years, it is changing drastically. And it, I think it's changing for the better. Obviously, I wouldn't yeah. say that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it definitely is. It's just bringing that diversity and unique stories that are fresh. Yeah, so and I think it's definitely important. So I think that kind of that will bring an audience. That's not the, the motivation for doing it, but it brings an audience. But I think that my audience is kind of like um, is that bracket of 16 to 34 year olds that are kind of it's it's a film that is like I said it's about younger people but it's aimed at a slightly kind of older audience um, of kind of where you can hopefully an older audience will, will enjoy it as well but where you're at that age where you can still just about think back to what it was like to be a teenager or, or just a preteen and you watch the film and you kind of it makes you laugh and uh, about some of the, the yeah. things that you you did when you were younger, and some of the maybe the, the the white lies that you told, or the things that you did that you thought you would get away with, and you think back and you go, "Oh wow, that was you know <laughs> you were never going to get away with that," but because you were young, you didn't quite realize. So it needs to be a guilty pleasure for the slightly older audience and the younger audience who aren't quite there, but they want to watch it. They want to find out what's going on. Yeah, yeah. hopefully, yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you talked about working with animals, uh, working with children. <laughs> so there's a lot of yeah. obstacles that you'd have to overcome. But are there any particular obstacles that you've faced so far in your career that have really made you think differently about filming something or has strengthened strengthened your filmmaking skills? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, like I said, the, the, one of the main reasons I made these three short films was to, to learn, and I learned a lot. Uh, I still got so much to learn, um, but I think the one of the most important things is is surrounding yourself with a really good team of people. It depends, obviously, what role. If we're talking about a director's role, it it depends what kind of director you want to be as well. I'm not a technical director. I'm very much an actor's director. So 
my role is to to work with the actors that's what i really want to do try and work with them to get the best performance out of them as possible explain what i want from them but also give them that freedom a little bit to kind of work with that bring suggestions tell me i want a really open set where somebody can come to me and say to me oh you know when we do that why don't we try it in this way and if i can't say oh we're not going to do it that way because of this reason then it's like okay we need to try that if there's not a reason why i haven't suggested that then let's try that and i, I think we need I, for me i need to have that but i need to have that relationship with the actors and to work with them and rehearse i also feel and... if you give that freedom to the actors then they will trust you even more mm -hmm. and you'll get the performances you want Definitely, and I think if their if their suggestion doesn't work, then at least you've tried it. So yeah, and I, it, and I think being open is really good. Yeah, definitely, and you have to try it for them as well. Even if you know, unless you're really adamant, you're like, we haven't got much time, and that's not going to work. But if you're like, okay, that could possibly work, let's try it, and it gives them a little bit more confidence that they can say it and they can kind of bring the performance. And the reason, like, obviously, there's different um, ways of casting and stuff. But I I held auditions and I cast this person out of 10 20 however many people so there's a reason I, I chose that person so i've got to give them a little bit of freedom because you know they're there for on on merit and and i i think they can kind of do the performance um and there has been things from that where they've brought something to it a small example in my first film letters originally it's a, it's about a postman and he has this conversation with with somebody he's never met before and she gives him some like bad news and originally i'd said put the the bag with the letters down on the floor but what he did was he held the letters kind of on his chest the the bag sorry of letters on his chest like this and it was wonderful because it gave him something to hold on to while he was receiving the bad news and it created a barrier between him and the other person he was like saying i'm not comfortable with this situation and that came from the actor and i didn't think of that and it works so much better for that so i think that's really important to kind of do that um but yeah uh, back to the question what, what did i learn i learned so many different things i think <laughs> one of the the things that a few things preparation absolutely key um i don't do um storyboards i i, I know a lot of people mm. invest a lot of time in storyboards I, I'm not, I can't, I, I write the script, I know what I want it to look like, but without kind of really knowing in depth what the location is going to look like, and all, I find it quite difficult. So I have an idea, we do a shot list, but to be honest, on the day, we kind of, that goes a little bit out of, out of, out of the window. Basically, what I feel like shot list and, um, it mainly is for is for the producer and for the assistant director so we give it to them and then they go like at 1 p.m they go look lads you should be here and you're only here let's kind of keep on track and that kind of helps in that way but the way that i work with the dp that i've worked with on the last couple of shorts um, and the the previous dp on the first shot was that we kind of we knew what we wanted but we kind of just went along with it as we were there and we kind of tried to work on it and it can be a little bit of a slower process than having the exact shots but i don't i, I again i think you need that freedom of okay let's have a look at this shot we need a close-up and we know we need a close-up but let's not kind of let's kind of work with that and then and where we're going to do and so there's a lot of kind of working it out on a day we kind of block it out a little bit but go along with it. But I think you need to know that that's going to take a little bit of time. Everything's going to take longer than you you think it's going to take. Um, so in, you're, yeah, cool. no, yeah, so I you was have, disagreeing. Yeah, <laughs> it, everything always takes longer than you think. So you have to be prepared in other ways. If you're having the freedom of we're not sure exactly what shots we're going to do in exactly what order, and we're going to go with the flow a little bit, not too much. Everything else has to be really organized and really in place. And everybody needs to know what their role is and what's expected from their role. Um, I think if you're going to do that, then you need to have an amazing first OD or, yes. or a producer uh, on board who can then keep you tied down to that schedule. Because if not, like you said, you will run over and then you'll spend more money. Um, so just, yeah, I, I would say just be careful if you're going to go <laughs> and shoot that way. Yeah, I think, and and it, you know, we did. We only had the budget to shoot each of the short films we shot shot on one day, 
And after the first one, I wanted to definitely have two days for the second one, but we just didn't have the, the money, the budget. It was, you know, if we we're going to do it over two days, everything was going to be less. So the, you know, it was going to be, the camera was going to be um, less expensive. You know, we were, we were going down the packages and, and everything else. We were going to have to try and find money everywhere and, and pay for everything twice or the actors twice. I mean, so it, that was really kind of difficult. So we had to do it in one day and, and we did get to points where, you know, it's, there was the third film is set in the laundrette and the laundrette owner is waiting there, you know, and we're trying to get this last shot. And, and I'm talking to the DP and it's like, we need to get two more shots. And it's like, let's decide. We had to decide, do we get this shot or do we get that shot? And I think we made the right decision. But we're literally, the last shot is the last shot before the laundrette owner is like, you know, you need to leave now kind of thing. Uh, that added pressure does not help. No, it doesn't. Um, and But I think, yeah, so you've got to surround yourself with really good people, get a really good crew. And um, one thing I will mention is the sound. So sound is super, super important. Um, and I think it's something that's easily overlooked. And I was kind of hands-on with the actors I was talking to the DP and on the the third film in particular we dropped the ball a bit on the sound there was a few things that could have been done better um, and I should have been overseeing that but also maybe I need another person within the team it was a very small team to be overseeing that as well and making sure the sound was okay um, and it was just one of those things that there was, there was if we'd known the sound at some point wasn't being recorded very well um, that there was a lot of noise coming from outside. There was a lot of things going on. If we knew how much that was affecting the sound, we would have stopped recording. We wouldn't have carried on recording takes. We would have tried to find work a way around it. But what happened was, unfortunately, we got to the end of the shooting and it was only then in the editing process, it was like, okay, this sound is really, really difficult. And there's a lot of background noise. And I had um, like a sound mixer, sound designer, who is working on it and he did a really good job on the second film but on the third film he found the, the sound so difficult that he was cleaning up the sound but to get rid of the background sound it was affecting the dialogue um and it was it was really really difficult and i was working on something else and i was talking to somebody and i said to them i said to them oh, we've got these issues we've got this going on and he said oh i can take a look for you and and fortunately he he worked it out and the sound is is really good especially where we were coming from um but, but it I was think, a real big thing yeah i think you've hit the nail on the head there with um talking about sound especially coming from a festival programmer's point of view if you have a festival that for example manchester liftoff received over two thousand submissions if there's a film that comes through and the sound is horrendous. There is no way we can program it because that then has to go through the, the surround sound. And essentially, you're just hurting the audience by having sound going through through the uh, microphones. L literally, it, it's the most important thing. And I, I can't stress it enough to filmmakers. Make sure your sound is on point. So I'm yeah, glad I... you I'm glad you raised that point. Yeah, is no, there, I mean, um, it's really important. Is there any final pearls of wisdom that you can share with our network before we before we finish this interview? Oh, pearls of wisdom. Um, I think it's just um, the, the, the key thing. So networking, really, really helpful. Um, so meet as many people as you can. Um, do different things to meet people. Um, set up your own events or go to lots of other people's events. Go to festivals, even if you're not in the festival. Um, I went to the Liftoff Festival in London as well, just to see what was going on, see other people's films, meet the filmmakers. Um, just get yourself out there as much as possible. Have a business card, have a website. Even if you haven't really made anything, make it look like you're professional. Just put yourself out there. Um, don't go around saying you've done things you haven't, but make yourself look as professional as possible. Um, just yeah, meet 90 people. percent of this industry is smoke and mirrors <laughs> yeah so... exactly um which is quite difficult sometimes because you're not sure <laughs> who you <laughs> should network with but you you can find out fairly quickly um and make stuff go out there and make it like you said make sure the sound is good you know at the end of the day if you want to get into a festival and if you want to make stuff and you want to progress your career yes you want to get a budget you want to get some funding you want to sell fund um, you want to get a decent camera and make something good and you want good crew. But until that is possible, 
go out and make stuff really do make it with a film make it with your camera you know your phone whatever you've got make something because you're going to learn something from that process even if nobody ever sees that it's worth kind of getting out there write things make things make connections with people um and yeah i think that's probably the most important thing is you've just got to get a good team of people around you so that you can you know they're helping you on your project but you're helping them as well because they're getting a credit they're getting experience um and just connect with with people that that are doing a, a similar thing to you whether they can help you or not going off of that then as you are a professional member on the network if there is anyone who's listening to this um feel free to get in touch with Anthony. I mean, you, you, I see you all constantly on there, so it's nice that um, people can then go on there and connect with you if, if that's via the forum or messaging you directly. Yeah, 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 yeah. get in touch, definitely. I, I think it's really important. I always like to, to talk to people, and we're all really, really busy, but and have a little chat and email if you're in London, and, you know, it's possible to, to meet up. I like meeting up with people all the time. Um, I run, like I said, I run my own film night, so we, we screen um, films. Uh, we screen six films each month. Um, it's called Forest Film Club. So if you find that, it's we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. If you have a film, send in your film. We like to, to watch as many films as we can because we like to, to show them as well. Why don't you send me a link um, and I'll post it with this interview. So if okay, anyone cool, is interested, yeah. they, can, they can easily access it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Great. it's wonderful. We wanted just another space to kind of to sh share some films. Perfect. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for your time. Um, yeah, I'm sure I'll pass across again many, many times, especially um, virtually. So, yeah. No, thank you very much. It's been fun. And um, yeah, lift off the whole organisation. The festivals are really great. Um, and yeah, I definitely encourage people to, to get involved. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. No worries.